Can we bring Amy Cotton to the stage, ladies and gentlemen? I want to I wanna warn you, there's something in here that sort of sounds like a compliment, but it, it might not be. You can be the judge, and don't get angry with me. <laughs> Take a look at Amy Cotton, ladies and gentlemen. 18 years with the Canadian national judo team, 11 national titles, two-time Olympian, Pan-American bronze medalist, Amy Cotton, Nova Scotia's greatest ever judoka. She was determined. She was disciplined. She was focused. Uh, and, you know, sh she was there for business. She wasn't there to fool around, and she, she had a goal, and that's what she was there for. So anybody that was around her, you know, they were, they were drawn by that, you know, if not inspired. I knew her mom quite well, and, uh, you know, when you know her mom and you get to know her mom, you know that uh, Amy was probably cut from the same cloth, you know. She's a very strong, independent woman uh, and very, very, very determined. Amy's accomplishments on the judo mat are impressive enough, but especially so when you consider that for her entire career, she also battled a hidden opponent. It's incredible the amount of time she, her career went on, you know, and it's really a testament of her determination and her, her willingness to succeed. You know, she suffered from juvenile uh, arthritis all through her years in judo, and judo is, you know, arguably the, the toughest sport uh, in the world and the toughest sport in the body for sure. So I know she took, uh, you know, I know she took a, a pounding over the years, and you know the fact that she held on so long was a real, a real testament to her, her determination and her personality. And also, perhaps a testament to her style, which her former teammates struggled to characterize. As an athlete, she, she was definitely uh, unique. Uh, I guess is the best word to use. Uh, she had a, an odd sense of balance. And, uh, and very physically, physically strong, you know, for, for her size and her, and her weight class. Hard to describe, kind of like, as one of our coaches at one point described, she was like a bag of water, you know, trying to keep, trying to keep a bag of water on balance, is, you know, so. <laughs> is that a compliment? I don't know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Style questions aside, there is one aspect of Amy Cotton's career that is both unambiguous and undeniable. She's definitely by far the most successful judo player we've ever had and probably one of the most successful women in the history of Judo Canada. Uh, she leaves uh, a huge legacy uh, for uh, definitely for the women in, in this province. You know, for her to do what she did, two Olympic Games, uh, you know, with one Olympic Games in the middle that she probably should have made as well. Uh, you know, yeah, she leaves uh, an incredible legacy behind. Hi, Amy. Congratulations for your nomination in the Hall of Fame in Nova Scotia. Thanks, Amy, I'd just like to congratulate you for being nominated in the Nova Scotia Sport Hall of Fame. I think you really deserve it. I'll remember all the times we spent together, especially at the 2012 Olympic Games. And keep working hard, and I guess we'll see you around. The Sports Hall of Fame induction, Amy, uh, from Team Saskatchewan to you, uh, all the best. Amy Cotton, the judoka from Judic, and the newest member of the Nova Scotia Sport Hall of Fame. To present the plaque, we'd like to welcome Bob McKinnon back to the stage, the President and CEO of the Nova Scotia Provincial Lotteries and Casino Corporation. And to present the pin from Canada Sport Atlantic and Provincial Judo, Mr. Scott Tanner. Come on forward, guys. <laughs> if you missed that exchange, she said, bag of water, seriously? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Look, he's sucking up now. He's going to, there you go. 
Yeah, hell yeah. Good job, buddy. Good to see you again. All right, so I've followed your career for a really long time. Coincidence or not, Judoka Jadik. Judoka Jadik, did it, did it have to happen? I think so, yeah, no choice. Can, can you tell me how you, how you got hooked? Well, my older brother started Judo a couple years before me, and then when I started school, I was a very adventurous, high energy, kind of bad kid, I guess, and my parents kind of put me in Judo to try to calm me down a little bit. They wanted you to get thrown around a little, or? Well, I was usually the one doing the throwing. <laughs> As those poor opponents on the on the tape there, yeah. Yeah, I know. That's kind of what happens. To the opponent. Usually, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, the, the fact, we heard uh, Scott talk about your mom, and he also talked about overcoming juvenile arthritis. Can you tell me how you, how you did that? Because that sport's tough enough, I think, as it is. Yeah, um, well, I fell in love with the sport long before I fell in love that I was diagnosed with juvenile arthritis. And at the age of 15, I got diagnosed, so the doctor said, you can try to do it, but we don't know. So me being in love with the sport, I decided to keep going. And determination, will, just a drive and a love for the sport. I wanted to do it to prove everybody wrong that always said that you'll never do it. And that was my drive to do it. Where do you think that came from? Probably my mom. <laughs> And, and she was what sort of person? Um, determined. She worked right up until she passed away. And she's what keeps me going today. Um, on a night like tonight, obviously very special, when you think back to career highlights, what jumped to mind? Athens 2004, having my mom and my dad both there with me. It was the best for me to have my parents in the stands and watching, and in London, to have the support of family behind me. You know what, Amy? Eight, 18 years is long for it to be long for a baseball career. Be long for a golf career, <laughs> right? Yeah, for judo, 18 years. How how do you pull that off? Determination. I won it when I made the 2004 Olympics. I was so happy, and then I wanted to do 2008, and I ended up breaking my foot eight months before the Olympics and I missed qualification. So I drove through it and I said, okay, I'm going for the next one. And I worked and I worked and I worked for the next seven years to make it to 2012. This sport is still a, a massive part of your life, isn't it? It is, and now three years, four years after retirement, I'm coaching out west in Saskatchewan, so I'm giving back to the sport now, so it's really good. And you're coaching tomorrow, aren't you? I am. I have to be on a flight tomorrow morning and coach in Toronto at 8 a.m. What, what time's the flight? 6.30. <laughs> well, listen, if you want to wanna get to sleep early, don't hang out with Todd. He's very <laughs> wired. Um, but uh, congratulations to you and welcome to the Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. Right. 